Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We meet again in my uh, YouTube channel. We continue our discussion about marriage in Islam. Last time we talked about a few basic things related to marriage in Islam. This video is intended for people in the world who want to know more about uh, what it means to get married in Islam. I'm going to explain that in English. First, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a priest, <laughs> okay? I just try to share the knowledge of Islam in a, in a sense of uh, being a scholar. Although I don't speak Arabic, but I'm using a book that is uh, acceptable in uh, Indonesia. Right. So if you have any question, you can write down your question in the comment section. Now, this is the book that we have discussed in the first uh, section. If you haven't read my description on my uh, first session, then you need to see part one of this series. I just go on about the marriage in Islam. I will continue this description about this one. Uh, married in Islam, and it relates to about a happy family. What does it mean to have a fam happy family? What is it like to have a happy family in Islamic perspectives? Now, again, this book was written by Mustafa Baisa. The title of the book is Warga uh, Bahagia or Happy Family. The third uh, publication was published by in East Java. We have discussed about this one in part one of this series. Now I will continue uh, reading the next session about this one. Okay, page 10. So please stay with me. I'm going to read you the Arabic letters and then the translation. After that, I will uh, share with you my interpretation or the understanding about the translation. If you find any misleading statement or wrong uh, perception of my description, then you may type your comments in the, the comment section. All right, now the first one you see on page 10, this is about the four types of wives candidates, okay? So this is going to be interesting. If you are a female out there, or you are a male out there, and you want to, uh, you plan to get married, then you need to understand these four types of uh, wife candidates. And if you are a woman and you want to get married to an Islamic man, then you need to categorize yourself in which category that you are in. Why is it so important to, to categorize yourself? Because the way you live your life will determine how happy your family will be. So happiness is not just about you yourself. Happiness is about a family. If you want to be happy, you have to make your uh, spouse happy and your child or children. Okay. Now we start with this uh, concept. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Tungkahul mar atu li Arab li Arabia lima liha wali sabiha wali hasabiha wali jamaliha wali di niha fazfur zati dini taribat yadaka. So this is what it says. Um, this one, Tungkahul Mar. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I wrote it wrong. This one, it's supposed to be Liar Bain. See, Liar Bain, Liar Bain, Lima Liha, Wali Sahabiha, Wali Jamaliha, Wali Diniha. So, this is what it says Wali Diniha, uh, Fazuhur, Lizati Dini, Taribat Yadaka. <clears throat> so, you can you can uh, see me similar with people who try to read the Arabic letters. Um, all right, now let me read you the translation of this 
this hadith to Indonesian language. And then after that, I'm going to give you the interpretation of what it means from my perspective. Uh, orang kawin dengan perempuan itu disebabkan oleh empat perkara. Satu, karena harta benda. Dua, karena derajatnya. Tiga, karena kecantikannya. Empat, karena agamanya. Maka kawinlah kamu dengan wanita yang beragama. Misalnya kamu akan beruntung. Hadis sahih riwayat Bukhari dan Muslim. Alright, so the meaning of this hadith is that uh, this is the Uh, the great advice and suggestion from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that people get married with women, so so it is directed to men actually. People who want to get married with women, it's caused by two uh, two things or two cases or maybe two reasons. Okay, the first one because of uh, wealth. So perhaps you want to marry that woman, be your wife because she is uh, wealthy or she was born in a wealthy family. Maybe that's the reason why a man wants to get married with that woman. And the second reason is because of her social status. Drajat, I mean your social ranking. Perhaps you're, you're a prime minister or you might, you might probably be a CEO of a company, but you're still young and you're a female and there's a man who is attracted to you. That's one of the reasons. And the third one is because of um, her beauty or her beauty and uh, or prettiness. Um, that's, of course, that's very obvious, okay? N no men like to have a, an uh, ugly woman, actually, but because of her uh, beauty. Number four. But anyway, beauty, pretty, and ugly are uh, very biased in this day and age. So you need to be really careful to decide what do you mean by pretty, uh, ugly or um, pretty, okay? You need to determine that because every culture has its own standard of beauty, okay? And number four, because of her uh, religion. Religion here means is a spiritual conduct, not just it's religion, okay? No, that's one thing, okay? Sometimes I, I notice and I observe that okay, there are women who call themselves a Muslima, but the very first thing that I pay attention to a kind of woman is whether she prays or not, whether she does the five days obligation prayers or she skips it. It's a very important thing. If a woman does not obey God, how can she follow you as your husband as her husband okay that's what that's what i'm talking about if she neglected god's order how can he easily follow whatever you said no it, it's not going to be no, it doesn't work that way okay no, that's one thing so the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave a suggestion and advice a very strong advice that for any Islamic man or a man of, with a pious character or personal conduct should refer a woman because of her religion or faith. Now, I'm talking about this thing though. If you prefer a woman because of her wealthy, karena uh, harta benda, remember that wealthiness does not last forever okay someone might get old and then she might probably um, have some disease when she gets old we don't even know that okay and wealthy is just material stuffs the most important thing is that the person who has that wealthiness is she a good person is she morally fine or Is, does she understand her religion well? What does God teaches her to do um, in life? And uh, what will she behave later on when she becomes a wife? That's the very basic questions that men need to ask themselves before they say yes to a certain woman. And if you prefer a woman because of her social status, now, look, remember, okay, 
Today, she might probably work as the CEO of a company, chief of executive officer. That status will not be forever. One day she will be retired or she wants to quit her job because she wants to pay attention to her family. Why not? So this is very different cases. And the third one is because of her grace or her beauty. Well, yeah, that's, so this is the symbol of the beauty. It's very interesting. Um, of course, you can pay attention to a woman because of her pretty or uh, being so graceful and then uh, nice and uh, everything that can serve your eyes well. But remember, everything that you can see sometimes lie. Don't fall yourself into a trap of believing that whatever you see, that is the truth. No, sometimes people can uh, can make you uh, in a wrong way. You need to really pay attention to see what's inside. Don't pay attention to what you see outside because people have different characters. People have different ways of expressing things in their lives. So that's you need to really pay attention to. And if you choose because of her faith or her religion, religion and her personal conduct in a spiritual sense, then you will, this is what, what the prophet said, then niscaya, uh, it means that possibly you will be lucky. So lucky in here means it's not just, um, <clears throat> because there is a deep consequence of, <coughs> excuse me, deep consequence of choosing the wrong person to be your spouse. If you choose someone who has spiritual conduct, then she will probably be responsible with her family. She will take care of her children. Uh, she might go to work, but then she can manage the time between her work, herself and her children or her family. So she needs to play that in between. And most important thing is that she obeys what Allah SWT said in the Quran and what Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad SAW informed to all Islamic women in such a very detail like this one. Okay, so that's the decision, the decision from uh, the Prophet Muhammad SAW regarding before you get married and which woman that you need to choose. That's the message for men. And if you are a woman, then you need to consider yourself in which category that you are. It's, are you in a category of that you're wealthy? That's okay, that's good. It's, all of these women are good, it's fine, nothing bad about them. I didn't say that they are bad. What I mean is that if four women standing right in front of an Islamic man who wants to get married, then which woman that he should pick, then the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said that he best to choose uh, the Islam, the pious women, pious women who soleha or uh, based on her spiritual conduct. It's uh, you get you will get more lucky in that after that. That's what that's the point is. On page eleven, okay. Now we move on to the next page. On page eleven, this is about um, gadis dan janda. Gadis means uh, it's is a virgin, uh, a woman who never gets married before. That is the meaning of Gadis. But uh, the next word is Ganda. See, when I point my um, cursor here, my mouse in here. So Janda means a woman who has got married and then she becomes a widower. widower. So that's, that's uh, obvious. Now let me read you the Arabic um, Hadith, what does it say according to this one? Okay. Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And Abi Huraira. Okay. Abi Huraira. So this is Abi Huraira. It says that uh, Rasulullah Ola la tunakahul ayyamun hatta tusta mara. Wala tunkahul bikru hatta tusta zan. Olu ya Rasulullah. Wakaifa. Ithnuha kola antaskuta antaskuta. So that's that's uh, the Arabic uh, letters. How it 
may sound in my uh, pronunciation. Okay, so now let me read you the translation of this hadith from the Prophet Muhammad SAW. Dari Abi Hura, Abu Hurairah bahwasanya Rasulullah SAW telah bersabda, tidak boleh dinikahkan seorang janda, melainkan telah diajak berunding terlebih dahulu. Dan tidak boleh dinikahkan seorang perawan, melainkan setelah dimintai izinnya atau kesepakatannya. Para sahabat bertanya, Ya Rasulullah, bagaimana caranya untuk mendapatkan izin itu? Rasulullah menjawab, apabila gadis itu diam. Jawab Rasulullah. Hadis sahih riwayat Bukhari dan Muslim. All right, my dear uh, viewers. So this this is clear to to everyone now that if someone wants to marry a widower or the ex-wife of another man, then uh, we or you as a man need to ask her her uh, consent first if she wants to marry with you or not. Do not start with her. She is not allowed to ask first because she's a widower, okay? It's, 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 it's completely different. At this point, what I'm trying to understand is that um, janda or a widower cannot get married unless there is a man who tries to propose her or tries to marry her. So it should be started from the man. It should not be started from the woman or the widower. So at that point, the widower needs to wait for a man who proposes her. So it's the, the consent. Okay, that's very interesting. This is this is hadith. So is, everyone says, "Oh, you are not you not belong to Islamic ummah if you don't follow the hadith of Muhammad Sallam." See, this is his hadith. You need to follow this. If you are a woman and you want to marry a man, you need to be silent if you say yes. But if you mumble jumble and say blah, blah, blah stuff, it means that you are not really serious about that matter. Okay, so now, excuse me. And it is not allowed to, to uh, make a virgin married uh, unless um, she had been asked for her consent. So there is no forced marriage in Islam. That's completely wrong, okay? Now at this point, women are not forced to marry in Islam. That's, that's uh, obvious. If a woman doesn't want to marry a man, then she can say no to her parents and the parents will forward her statement to the person, okay? So it is not, it is not the virgin or the woman herself to say yes or no. No, it's completely wrong. If, if there is a man who wants to marry a woman, he needs to ask for her permission and her parents' permission, both ways equal, okay? As, as important as when you want to have a food and you need to have a drink. That's sort of that kind of permission. Otherwise, you're going to be considered as stealing someone's daughter okay so you need to ask um, for that and when we know that the woman say yes when she is silent so this is this is the point when the girl is silent all right so from this point i hope that you could get the point of uh, the meaning of this thing that uh, marriage is is allowed in Islam and it is encouraged for the betterment of the human civilization. It's not just for Islam's sake, it's for human themselves to choose the best one for the rest of their lives, okay? But, but you know, Islam also handles uh, things and problems like um, child, uh, you know, intercourse, and Islam also deals with how you manage the property of husband and wife, so on and so forth okay there will be so interesting discussion about this one so keep following my youtube channel okay i'm going to move on to the next one it's about see this is very interesting look at this picture lihat dahulu calon istrimu this is what it means uh, what does it mean with this 
you need to see your uh, wife candidate first. People say that Islam has forced marriage. That's completely wrong. I believe that no people are forced to marry someone that they uh, do not even know or like. But I do, I do believe that a certain tradition, a certain condition is um, making such type of marriage becomes permissible. Well, in my case, in, in the culture of uh, Minangkabau in Indonesia, or even in Sudanese, I never hear people are forced to get married, no. But people are introduced to a certain person, and then if he or she likes that person, then the marriage can happen. There's, there's one, one or the other ways. The next one, uh, this is what it means, lihat dahulu calon istrimu, istrimu. So this is for the man. It means that he can see the woman first. But just from the outside, seeing in here means not seeing everything, but just to look, look first, okay? Just look for the external uh, matters first. Uh, let me read you the Arabic letters. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Khataba mughiru tubnu shu'batin imra'atan faqala nabi yunzur ilayha fa'innahu ahru ay yu'dima bay nakuma. So that's uh, the Arabic one. The translation in Western Indonesia is mughirah bi shu'bah meminang seorang wanita. Nabi bersabda, biarlah terlebih dahulu calon istrimu. Dengan demikian itu telah mengeratkan hubungan kamu berdua. Hadis riwayat Termizi. See, this is the point. There is no such thing called forced marriage in Islam. No. But perhaps if you hear in any other Muslim countries, just because there are a lot of people Muslim there, doesn't mean Islam is practiced in daily life. Okay. Um, so this is very interesting to say that man is encouraged to see the, the woman first, to meet first. Okay? To, there is no such thing as a woman is covered and then the man cannot see the woman and suddenly he gets married. No, that's, that's completely false. Okay, now this is according to the hadith of the Tirmizi. Right, so I hope that at this point that woman in the world can understand her position in Islam. Uh, a, woman, a woman is protected entirely from any abuse, okay? So this man, see in this point means not hook up, no. Uh, a man is not allowed to take a woman at night, no, that's completely wrong. A man can come to the woman's house only after he gets permission from her parents okay so that's not true if you uh, you don't get married and then you can both go anywhere you'd like and then spend the night both of you that's that's wrong it's that's not permissible that's uh, not acceptable in islam now i move on to the next one um this is for the the man to get married and the second one on page 13, okay. Uh, jangan meminang, okay. What does it mean with this, jangan meminang? So in English, it means that do not propose or do not engage. Engage, engagement ring, engage uh, sort of thing is the very Western cultural thing. But there is also another, another thing that you need to pay attention to if you want to uh, propose or engage with someone. Engage mean is a relationship before actual marriage in Islam, okay? So do not, do not associate that with what Western, most Western countries do. Um, it says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, La yakhtulubu rajulu ala khitbati akhihi hataya yadrukal khatibu qablahu au ba'isna Okay, this is Hamza in here. 
Okay, in Indonesia it is um, translated to be janganlah seorang dari antara kamu meminang wanita yang sedang dipinang saudaranya atau temannya sehingga peminang yang mendahulunya telah melepaskan pinangannya atau telah memberi izin kepadanya. Hadis sahih riwayat Bukhari dan Muslim. What does it mean? It means that when a woman is under proposed by another by another man then there is a new man who wants to marry this woman then this new man needs to ask permission first from the first man who proposes her okay so there's the ethical issue in here it's ethical concern okay woman is not a property a woman is a human she also needs a space for herself and she needs to be treated as someone who deserved her right it's not something to be um, to be taken from competitive uh, situation between two men no it's not it's completely completely wrong again okay point is that when okay now i'm talking to you a man if you want to propose a woman who is already engaged with another man then you cannot marry her unless you ask for permission to the man who engaged with her okay this is that's a very ethical issue in here you cannot marry a woman just because you like her and suddenly you say hi babe i want to marry you when will you be will you be my wife and then she said oh yes i marry you no that's not easy like that okay there are certain rules and ethical concerns that you need to do in islam so marriage is uh, considered as a holy is a holy situation holy conduct between two two uh, people it's not just for uh, desire or lust or you want to get your sexual needs to release or something like that no it's not like that it's it's ways beyond that okay so this is page 13 I'm going to discuss two pages more. The next one, okay, the point in here from these two pages, it says that the man is allowed to see his wife candidate first, seeing in the sense of getting to know what does she look like and then where does she live, how about her family, so under, knowing about her from the outside, okay? So a man cannot judge a woman easily just by looking at the outside, but of course, Everything started from your eyes. And then on page 13, it says that you cannot propose uh, an engaged woman. Okay, you cannot propose an engaged woman because you need to ask for permission from the man who already proposed her. The next one, okay, page 14. Okay, so this is very important in, in Islam is that you do the... Uh, there is a prayer that Islam calls as the um, the marriage prayer. I don't know how to call that in the in English, but it says this is uh, shalat means shalat is actually shalat, but in English the associate term that is suitable for that is prayer, prayer Islamic prayer. Okay, shalat is Islamic prayer, um, and then when you do this, you do it on the basis of that you get married. Salat perkawinan. So this is what we call uh, salat perkawinan. It means that uh, you want to to, to pray uh, because if you want to get married. Uh, let me read you this one. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, liyak timul khutbah thumma liyatawadda uh, fay uh, fahisinu wa du'ah. ثم يسلي ما كتب الله له ثم يحمد الله ويمجده ثم يقول اللهم إنك تقدير ولا أقدر وتعلم ولا أعلم وأنت علم الغيوب فإن رأيت أن فلانة okay this is the name um خير إل Khairali fi dini wa dunyaya wa akhirati fa'akhdur hali fa'inkana ghairuha khaira il 
li minha fi dini wa zunya wa dunya ya wa khirati fakdur hali sadaqallahu alazim In bahasa Indonesia, the translation is apabila seseorang telah mengambil keputusan bulat untuk hidup berumah tangga serta telah menentukan siapa calon istrinya, maka rahasiakan dahulu maksud untuk meminang gadis idamannya. Lalu ia mengambil air wudhu dengan sebaik-baiknya ia berwudhu. Kemudian ia melakukan sholat beberapa rakaat seganda hatinya. Selanjutnya memuji-muji Allah serta mengagungkannya. Setelah itu barulah ia membaca apa yang disebut di atas. Okay. After it means that you, when you already know someone that you want to propose. Well, in my case, I was introduced. Okay, I'm not searching for a woman at the time, but I was introduced to a woman, and then I met with her parents directly. So it's a different case. Uh, I think God sent me. God, Allah Subhanahu Taala, sent me, <laughs> uh, sent sent her to me so that we can. We could meet, so I wasn't searching for any woman at that time. And then you need to pray like this. That this is the prayer, and let me read you the the translation of this uh, dua into Bahasa Indonesia. The translation is, Ya Allah, sesungguhnya Engkaulah yang berkemampuan, sedangkan aku tidak mampu, dan Engkaulah yang mengetahui, sedang aku tidak mengetahui. Dan engkaulah yang serba tahu soal-soal yang gaib. Maka apabila engkau berpendapat bahwa si fulana, nah, fulana it means uh, dia, so that woman, uh, and then mention your your wife's names in here, sebutkan nama calon istrimu, menjadi baik bagi agamaku dan kedunianku, serta untuk hari akhiratku, maka takdirkanlah ia itu untukku. Dan apabila selain dia, calon istriku itu ada yang lebih baik dari dia, dalam agamaku dan duniaku serta bagi kepentingan akhiratku maka takdirkanlah perempuan lain ya untukku so this is the prayer to god so basically getting married is not just about having someone in your life but this is also about how you live your life especially for your religion for your faith um, agama okay and then for your world for your uh, dunia And then the next one, the most important thing is for your akhira. So that's the point of how you you need to. An Islamic man always say to God, if she is really good for me, if she is good not just for me but also for my agama, for my religion, for my dunya, and also for my akhira, then make her to be my wife. But if she is not good for me, it's not good for my dunya, and she is not good for my Uh, akira or life hereafter then um, please allow me to uh, marry another woman uh, that's the prayer to god to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's that's the rules what it says this is from hadith read ibn hibban hibban okay it's very interesting um very different from what we see from Hollywood or the Western movies, when a man uh, is attracted to a man, a woman, and then he suddenly met her in a bar, and then uh, hook up, and then saying yes, hello each other, then uh, gave her a kiss, and suddenly you spend the night together, and and thinking as if you are falling in love. That's that's not what Islam believes about um, marriage or relationship. It's it's about the commitment. It's about how you spend. Uh, your life together in this dunya. It's not just about you spend uh, whatever you want with that person. No, it's not like that. It's a very long process of the journey. Okay, and this is not about winning or losing in marriage. There is no such thing of winning or losing. If you think about being a winner in marriage, you actually lose. Okay, if you think about that, you are a loser in your marriage. Think again. Sometimes you're not a loser. It's not about winning or losing. Okay, no, that's this is very interesting. This is the uh, salat perkawinan. It's mean when you do your prayer to God uh, for how as many rakat as you want, and then you pray this. Okay, just you praying to God that if this person is good for me, then please allow him to be my imam. Or if this woman is good for me, for my life, for my dunya, for my akhirat, 
or for my life after death, then please uh, give the destiny that she will be my wife or he will be my husband. Yeah, that's you need to pray to God. So, so do not depend just to your parents. Do not depend just to your environment. Ask, ask God to give the best for you. And the next one, we move on to page uh, 16. This is very interesting. Um, what does it mean? It means that the greatest gift, it's the, the, the meaning is of this statement is the, the greatest blessing as well. Okay, so this, I like the picture, a woman with fairies and butterflies. So that's the way how a woman is uh, visualized and the way how woman is seen in Islam. Well, that's, that's according to what I believe, okay? Um, in some way inside the woman that she's just still a woman, okay? No matter how, how strong she is or uh, she wants to play a boxing or she wants to play soccer or she wants to do whatever it is to be masculine, Deep inside, she's still a woman and she cannot change that. Well, she can do the plastic surgery to change uh, her body, but that inside, that thing, the soul, she's still a woman, okay? The same thing with man. A man can do plastic surgery to change her, his body to be a woman, whatever he wants, but deep inside, he is still a man and he knows that. So. What does it mean with this? It means the greatest blessing for this woman to be married with. Um, what does it mean? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Azamun nikahi barakatai yashuruhu mu'nata. So um, what does it mean? The translation is sesungguhnya pernikahan yang paling besar berkahnya ialah perkawinan yang sedikit mas kawinnya. Hadis riwayat Ahmad. Wow, this is great, you know. Uh, maskawin, it means uh, mahar or um, something that you give before your marriage as, as a token of your seriousness to, to marry with this woman. And when the woman said that she agrees with the, with the lowest, uh, with the lowest uh, form of uh, maskawin or mahar, then that's the greatest blessing. Um, that means that she she wants to be seen not from money. She wants to be seen from something beyond that, something that cannot be uh, countable. So something that cannot be seen as um, as a cheap way because she is uh, way higher than that. You, yeah, it's just very interesting. It's the greatest greatest blessing in there, especially for women today. Women can go to work and then women can find jobs and women can have salaries or income and she can drive, she can build a house and she can be a rich person. And then if she wants to get married and then she requested diamonds or the mountain of gold and then thousands of dresses, for me, that's greedy. That's not going to be the greatest blessing. It means that she has that kind of level, okay? Um, well, I've, I am fortunate that, that the wife that I married didn't ask me a lot about that um, because I have seen quite many relationship, husband and wife, when the woman ask too much in the beginning of the marriage and eventually the marriage, the marriage will, will be lost, okay? Because the value of that marriage lies within the wealthiness. If the marriage lies within the value of happiness, contentment, and uh, the feeling of surrender of what's best from God, then eventually both of them will spend their days in happiness. All right, in page 17, see, you see there's two pictures. There's another picture, I think two old people, see, no child um, can be seen at this point, okay? Uh, so this is what it says, it's quite long. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yustahabu ayyabda al-khatibu bilhamdulillah. Ashana'u alayhi wa salatu ala rasulillah. Wa yaqulu ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa dawla sharika la. 
wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu ji ji tukum raghiban fi fatatikum fulanatun aw fi karimatikum fulanati bin fulana aw khaw zalik zalik so this is the, the arabic letters now let me read you the translation this is about memajukan lamaran it's about proposing proposing um, the intentions to marry but it is done by the parents not by the child who wants to get married okay for example that i want to marry then it's not going to, to be done by me it should be done by my parents and then Um, disukai pembuka kata si peminang dengan ucapan selamat segala sorry segala puji dan puja bagi Allah serta salawat dan salam bagi Rasulullah SAW. Aku bersaksi bahwasanya tiada tuan selainkan Allah semata tiada sekutu baginya dan aku bersaksi bahwa Muhammad itu adalah abdi dan rasulnya. Kami datang pada tuan dengan maksud melamar anak gadis atau saudara tuan yang bernama bla 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 untuk anak atau saudara kami yang bernama bla bla bla. So in Islam Uh, the value lies within the parents of the male comes to the parents of the female. It's not the other way around. Okay, it is considered as uh, morally morally unacceptable if the parents of the woman goes to the parents of the man. It is wrong in Islam. Uh, as far as my Matrilineal, matrilineal cultures say that I try to understand. Um, some people have misunderstood about this proposing stage of uh, getting married. Some family, especially the parents of the female, comes to the male's family, wants to propose the boy or propose the, 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 the male child of the family. That is wrong. That is completely wrong. What should be done is that the male family should come to the female family in order to propose the daughter. Okay, that's, that's how it works. Don't change the situation. You cannot change that. It should start it from the male family and then it is followed by the female family. So that is the proposing stage. All right, Sen? See in this picture, no female and no male child that come to uh, to see the parents. So the child or the the male child or the female child should stay at home. Uh, that's that's the way how it works. Okay, so you, you don't you don't go directly to someone uh, to a daughter of someone and said, "Hey, hey girl, I want to marry you. Come on, we're gonna have fun." Blah blah blah. Things like that. It doesn't work that way. The parents should know because either the, the boy or the daughter or the son, the daughter had been raised by their parents. Of course, their parents have a strong right to say yes or no to the proposal. <laughs> That's one thing for sure. So don't try to have a very strong relationship with your feeling or with your heart unless your parents know that you have that kind of relationship. Otherwise, it's going to damage and ruin your heart one day when you know that uh, the person that you love tries to propose you, but then your parents say no. That's going to ruin, ruin your, your own heart. And, but you started it first, right? So think about it. You had been raised by your parents, and then when you grow up to get married, and then you said whatever I want. I don't care with my parents now. That is wrong in Islam, okay? So parents have strong rights toward their child, especially when the child to get married. It's the seniors. And Islam is also protecting the rights of the parents and the rights of the older people uh, in consideration to taking care of the child to get married. Page, that's page 17. Uh, are you... Are you okay to continue to the next one? Okay, I'm going to uh, be talking about this. Okay, so this is very interesting. And this is the core of the value of uh, getting married in Islam. 
let me read you the Arabic letters. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Iza tazawwa jal abdu faqadis takmala nishfud dini falyat takillaha fin nishfil baqai. What does it mean? Um, it means, okay, I'm reading uh, you the Indonesian translation first. Apabila seorang abdi telah kawin, maka sesungguhnya ia telah menyempurnakan separuh dari agamanya. Maka hendaklah ia bertakwa kepada Allah dalam separuhnya lagi dari yang masih tertinggal. Hadis riwayat by Hafi. So that is the value, okay? Islam encourage people to get married in the halal way or in a legal way. Don't play cat and mouse. No, you cannot do that. Islam prohibits that kind of thing. You should meet and then marry legally in the front of God in a very legal, legal standing in a very serious manner that this is serious case and this is holy. It's not just something like you get it and then you throw it out. It's like you want, no. And it, it, it says that when a man has, has married, Abdi, it means that it could be the man or the woman, both sides. It means that they have fulfilled or they have um, perfected half of their religion. Half of their religion, okay? So imagine like this. From the beginning of your life, when you were a child, you have practiced or salah prayer five times a day, and then you pray to God, and then you obey your parents, and you, you, you follow what your parents uh, order you to do in a positive sense, um, and then you be a good person in your life, and then you do nice good deeds to your friends, and be a good Islamic person, that's not enough, until you get married, okay, so when you get married, and then Allah said that you have completed your religion, a half of your religion. So 50% is seen from the status of your marriage because it's a long journey that you're going to stay with that person from to into the rest of your life. And then 50% is seen from your personal daily conduct when you commit Islamic um, order and Islamic uh, religious teachings and then you spread it to any people that you think might or uh, might need about your explanation for this okay um this is very interesting it's already 50 minutes by now i'm going to stop my explanation it's very interesting to understand how important it is to get married in islam marriage in islam is a very serious business it's not just a piece of cake because it combines two people into one, uh, one uh, I would call it one bond. And even though it is a bond, but it has obligations, it has rights in it. And then there is also some limitation and the encouragement of God about how to treat your wife and then how to treat your husband, what you need to do with your children. I'm going to stop share here. Um, thank you for you to listen my explanation about this kind of concept, uh, this video. The conclusion is that Islam always protect women in many direction and in many cases about the marriage itself. And then, uh, so this is completely wrong to say that Islam uh, con conduct the forced marriage. That's, that's wrong. This is from what I believe. This is the true hadith, uh, Sahih. This is acceptable, okay? To say that Islam uh, prohibits someone to marry in a forceful way. No, it's, it's not. It's not allowed to force someone to get married unless um, for a woman, uh, she, can, she can say yes or no to a man who proposes her by saying that to her parents and then let her parents know and forward her response to the parents of the, the male. Okay, all right. Isn't that interesting? 
the next video, I'm going to be talking about uh, another important issues. Again, I read the Arabic letters and then the translation in Basra Nisha, and then I'm going to give you my perception or my interpretation about what it means. And I'm going to link that to current situation of what's going on around us, how people interpret about marriage or talking about things in Islam, but they they are not Muslim themselves or even the Muslim, they do not practice Islam very well. They do not learn Islam. Okay, so I hope that you take it, this, uh, this explanation in a good, in a positive way. If you think it is going to be useful for your friends or your family members or your brother or sister, you can share my videos and I hope that my explanation is going to be useful for them. Thank you for listening to my description. I do not use any tags. I don't read any kinds of whatever in front of me. I just show you the file of the book. I'm talking to you directly, no editing, and this is being real. This is, this is me. Thank you for listening to my explanation. I hope that you uh, have a good, happy marriage. And then for someone out there who is still trying to find your spouse or you want to wife candidate or your husband candidate then remember you need to involve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can give you give the best one for you and when you get it you still have to do several important things after that all right bye bye assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh have a good day